Every year, thousands of experts evaluate the status of animal, plant, algae, and fungi species around the world. Using a common language of assessment, they categorize each species' risk of extinction on the IUCN Red List. The Red List provides a barometer of life. And every year, the outlook gets worse. More than 31,000 species are currently threatened with extinction. Most because of human action. But human action can also reverse the Red List trend. So conservationists, governments, and communities around the world are joining forces, activating tried and tested IUCN tools in a coordinated effort to assess, plan, and act for wildlife. Together, we can save species from extinction. Together, we can win the fight for our planet's future. Together, we can reverse the red. Welcome to The Possibilists. The Possibilists is now a partnership between Pelicanus and Reverse the Red. In this series, we will highlight the scientists, organizations, institutions, and communities focused on reversing the trend of biodiversity loss and recovering species on the IUCN Red List. We are so excited to announce this partnership and to get these amazing success stories out to the world, spreading optimism for the conservation of biodiversity. In this episode, Austin and Taylor Parker of Pelicanus talk with Megan Joyce with Reverse the Red about what Reverse the Red aims to do, how they're doing it, and how you can get involved. Enjoy our conversation with Megan, and I hope you get as excited about Reverse the Red as we are. Megan, thank you for joining us. If you don't mind, can you please uh, introduce yourself and, and tell us uh, who you work for and what you do? Sure. Hey, and thanks for having me. I am Megan Joyce. I am the communications officer for Reverse the Red. And Reverse the Red is a super cool uh, global movement um, working to uh, reverse the biodiversity loss trend. Um, and so especially using the IUCN Red List as a measure of conservation. Yeah, that was gonna be my first question is like I say, okay, it's called reverse the red. What is the red that we're trying to reverse? Yeah, so the IUCN has the red list index and the red list assessments, and that is put together by scientists all over the world. They assess over, you know, tens of thousands of species and put together these assessments and really categorize where the species is on this red list um, index. And so it goes from extinct in the wild um, all the way through, uh, you know, threatened, you know, um, and all the way up. And so as uh, reverse the red, we are trying to get species to move uh, one step further away from extinction. So it's, it's almost like an, an international list of species that are in peril, I guess. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's put together with data from um, a lot of the IUCN's uh, species specialist groups. They are the ones that often uh, lead that assessment. Um, and then there are also national red list indexes as well. Um, and so each country can submit uh, their data to that. So if I remember right, when we talked to uh, John Paul Rodriguez, he mentioned there was like, I can't remember, was it 30,000 scientists or something like that? that are a part of this group, like that's a huge, huge network. I can't remember the exact number, but it, it's, it's so cool to know that there's that many people worldwide that are working on reversing the red. Yeah, and that's one of the really awesome, unique things about Reverse the Red as a global movement is that the network is so big and it's so full of experts and you know people who are 
really passionate about conservation and, and trying to save species. You know, and now that we know what reverse the red is and what the red list is, basically that comes down to biodiversity. What is important about biodiversity? Like what is, what is so important about protecting it and saving it? Biodiversity is everything, right? It feeds into our food systems. Um, it, you know, is the foundation of industries and livelihoods and, you know, helps to regulate climate as well. Um, and a lot of species and, you know, intact ecosystems really contribute to those ecosystem um, services, filtering air and water. Um, and we talk a lot about mitigating natural disasters, um, but it's also integral to a lot of uh, health outcomes, you know, pharmacy, biochemistry, agriculture, tourism, um, and biodiversity really just feeds into everything. Yeah. Zoonotic diseases that we, as we figured mm -hmm. out over the last few years. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, one of the things that I, I like about, um, reverse the red and, and uh, the red list is like, you kind of think of the big ones, like, you know, elephants, cheetahs, you know, whatever that the big charismatic megafauna pandas, but what you guys are doing is so in, you know, it incorporates everything. When it comes to this whole program, what are there spelled out goals that you guys are working towards? I think one of the things that feeds into our goals is really the targets that come out of um, the Convention on Biological Diversities COP15 meeting, which is going on in Montreal. And um, part of what our goals are is to really help national level actors, whether that's governments or, you know, organizations or collaboratives, um, meet their biodiversity targets. And so a lot of them will be signing on and, and figuring out what their targets are in Montreal over the next couple of weeks. Um, and some of them have targets uh, already set. Uh, one of the big things is that we, as a, as a, you know, global humanity, we did not meet our last set of biodiversity targets. And so meeting them this time is, is really the goal. And I definitely want to talk more about the CBD COP15 or any other acronyms that I can think of. <laughs> um, but the, the red list has been around for quite some time. Reverse the red is a fairly new um, um, arm of that, but can we, and I, with that network of thousands and thousands of scientists, there have to be some success stories. Like, and I know a couple of them, but like, can you share some of the success stories that, you know, that one of the things that we like to focus on is not only the success stories, but also just the fact that these people exist and they've dedicated their lives to making their, making these downward trending species go back up and create that success story for their own lives or for their own programs. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I think the stories that you share on Possibilists are really good examples of people doing awesome conservation work that is really making a difference. Um, we have a list of over 200 or about 200 species that have been moved one step, at least one step forward on the red list um, already. And that's through concerted conservation action. Um, a couple species that uh, we've highlighted, um, you might like this one, the Taylor salamander. Um, the Eastern Bard Bandicoot, um, we've got a Northern River Terrapin, uh, Prozwalski's Horse, uh, Yellow-Eared Parrot and Gray-Breasted Parakeet. There are, there are a bunch, they're all over, you know, the taxonomic spectrum, um, and there are people all over the world working on them. Yeah, I think that's what I love so much about, about this network is like, yes, there's the big traditional Western, you know, white male scientists involved. Um, but most of the work is being done by the local communities or the, the local scientists that have, you know, grew up in Mongolia and now they want to save their Shishovsky's horse, <laughs> um, the Mongolian horse, whatever it is. <laughs> yep. Um, and so that's, what's so cool about it is the, um, 
it's the the grassroots nature of it, the the the, the from the the bottom up nature of conservation, because that's the only way things get done. Yeah, and part of what Reverse the Red is really trying to do is bring together all of the people who are working on conservation. You know, there are so many people around the world. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel. You know, all of this stuff, all of these actions, all of these people are already doing work. We really just want to coordinate all of those resources and all of the people in order to really put together a plan to meet these targets moving forward. And that just, it's going to take everyone. And we absolutely know that there are so many people doing such great work all over. Yeah. I think again, that's what I love about reverse the red and the red list is that it's, it's that merging of the top down, like let's create large global scale plans while also trying to do everything we can to help the the local communities do their their part in saving their in the, their species. So, COP fifteen. It's the you, you kind of mentioned what it was called. It's the CBD COP fifteen. Mm-hmm. What is that? <laughs> Can you explain the, the the conference and 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 what the the goals are for it and what you know basically what the point of it is? Yeah, absolutely. And the and the COP stands for Conference of the Parties, and so. Uh, it's, it's the same UN, you know, organization that does the, um, COP for climate change that just happened in Egypt. You know, that's, it's a, it's a similar meeting. Uh, this one is biodiversity focused. And so the convention is really looking to address all of the threats to biodiversity and ecosystem services. And at this meeting, the 15th meeting of the conference of the parties, that's where you get COP15 from, um, they are looking to put together and approve um, a post-2020 biodiversity framework uh, with a whole bunch of targets. um, And this is the second phase of the COP15. Um, So they already already did the first half. uh, And this is the second half to approve that draft and and really um, put that together. And so there are 196 parties. And so there are delegates from all of those parties uh, and more and, you know, organizations like Reverse the Red and many of our member organizations from our executive committee, like On the Edge. And uh, everyone is there with the same goal of, you know, figuring out how to stem biodiversity loss, you know, um, put development into, put resources into the development of tools um, and figure out how to get involvement from stakeholders across the spectrum. Um, And then the goals of this uh, one, this meeting in particular, are uh, raising ambition for nature. Um, They have a theme um, to set humanity on its path by 2050 of living in harmony with nature, Um, linking the nature and biodiversity and climate agendas. You know, that's that's really important. Climate change is, is one of the drivers of biodiversity loss. And so really linking those things together is important. Um, matching commitments, you know, with, with real action is part of the framework as well. It's all well and good to have targets, but we really need to put plans in place that will help us achieve those. Um, and then, and then again, engaging different sectors and stakeholders from public, private and philanthropic and, you know, all across all across the world to be to be in on these goals. Yeah, I love to hear that action is is a, such a large part of it because you know you can get jaded and kind of like oh just another you know meeting of the organization talking about everything we need to do, but then it's like if they actually are focusing on it's like hey here's some action items that each nation and it's like you said 196 parties that's pretty much every country right almost <laughs> you know, it everyone might be missing one or two yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that's really, that's awesome to hear that there's actually going to be some action items that people or these nations are going to say, hey, okay, let's take these, these goals and then kind of incorporate them into our own national biodiversity goals. Yeah, and the action is really one of the things that drives Reverse the Red, too. We have, um, we, we utilize the Assess Plan Act cycle that the IUCN um, and their conservation planning specialist group uses, and you know, one of the, one of the things we always say is you, you can't just 
plan, you have to plan to act. Um, it's, you know, assessments and planning are all, are all well and good, but it really, the action is really what is going to drive um, positive conservation. What is Reverse the Red doing to support the world and the, the COP15, everyone involved in meeting these targets? Yeah, um, we have uh, four different pillars. And so two of our pillars are really on the, um, on the conservation side of things. And because of this vast network that we have, Reverse the Red is uniquely positioned to help the world in meeting these targets. Um, and so our first, our first pillar is mobilizing national networks. And that's really to build and strengthen national level networks and help them work to accelerate conservation and deliver on these targets. And by doing in, you know, doing that, we are creating centers for species survival, which is dedicating paid resources located within strong institutions to, you know, work on those assessments, planning and action pieces of improving conservation status of species. Um, we also have uh, national specialist groups, which is understanding that, you know, that that conservation planning, assessment planning and action takes place at the national level. Um, and so it brings together experts, not just, you know, all of the experts who work on sharks, but all of the experts in, you know, this country who work on species across taxonomies and understand what it takes to work you know, within that country at their national level. Um, and then our, our second pillar here at a four is measuring impact. And that really focuses uh, skills and ambition of conservation action on the goal of, you know, really reversing that biodiversity loss uh, in looking at the IUCN Red List assessment. And so we're developing methodologies that uh, use the Red List as a core measure of conservation success and supporting, you know, achievement of these targets by using the Red List Index in each country. And really the name of the game in, in both of these is collaboration. We are looking at these global networks to figure out a global measurement platform, but also, you know, figuring out, hey, you're all working on this, you know, is that working? How, how are we measuring this impact? Um, are we able to move species? Are we able to implement conservation actions that are that are working and you know how do we measure that and how do we replicate that in in other countries and that's really we want to connect you know resources and experts who are who are working on all of these things i don't know just as you were talking megan um it occurred to me that you know we've all had long careers in conservation and it's easy to get jaded when you see these large events, um, these global, these international events, and it's easy to go, oh, yep, the politicians are talking, great, fantastic. But I think it's also an important reminder that some of the biggest changes that we've seen in the last few years are because of these kinds of meetings. Everything from you know Kyoto Protocol in the late '90s to you know that motivated so many things. Um, you know, California instituted AB 32, which created, you know, carbon sequestration markets and, um, you know, some of the best um, regulations on air pollution. Um, and then the Paris Accord, you know, the only reason why several years later, we're now seeing bans on gas powered, petroleum powered vehicles, you know, not just in the United States, but, you know, a few other places around the world is because of the Paris Accord. And so, I don't know, it just made me think, like, you know, it's such an important reminder that there are big impacts from these types of meetings. You just don't see them immediately. You don't see them very specifically right away. And so I just wanted to, you know, bring that up as a reminder that, you know, these, these things do actually work. Yeah, and that's one of the um, main parts of the other two pillars of reverse the red we have an amplifying success pillar and a empowering communities pillar and you know the conservation movement is i don't need to tell you guys but in in real need of optimism and stories of success and we have those we just we really need to amplify them and we really need to tell them because conservation works we know that it works we know 
how to make it work. Um, and we really just want to, you know, tell all of those stories and, and share all of those resources so that everyone can enact programs that, that will work for conservation, for, you know, improving the status of species. Yeah. And, you know, I don't want to say one of the criticisms, but one of the things that we kind of get told about what we're doing is that like, we're overly positive. And it's like, wow, don't you see that like, biodiversity is really struggling right now. Climate change is going to ruin everything. It's like, well, of course, that's why we're doing this is there's a reason why the red list exists, you know? So what our, our take on it and, uh, you know, reverse the reds take is there's so much good work happening. And the more we can highlight those and the more we can say like, Hey, just a little bit of effort, a little bit of community involvement, a little bit of money or, whatever that needs to be put into it, resources, you can actually start saving species and creating habitat. There are success stories that we've already had. And if we kind of all realize that and start shifting our mindset and our priorities towards saving these things and changing this direction, uh, reversing the red, um, it, it's possible. And I think that's something that we're trying to highlight and, we're so excited uh, that Reverse the Red's doing the same. Yeah, absolutely. And even, you know, telling stories of um, specific uh, organizations or specific um, on the ground, you know, efforts. Um, the Laurel Park Foundation has moved over five species of parrots on the red list, you know, themselves. And they've bred and, and worked on releasing them back into the wild and, you know, doing captive breeding programs and their efforts have directly contributed to, um, three of those species moving two spots on the red list, um, even, which is just absolutely amazing, you know, that this, this one organization can do that. And the, um, Durrell Wildlife Conservation Trust, you know, similar thing, they work across a bunch of different taxonomies, but they've directly contributed to the Golden Lion Tamarin, uh, a warbler and a pigeon and um, a Mallorcan midwife toad as well. Um, and so, you know, just just one organization putting in a, a bunch of work and, and contributing to the conservation of species can, can really make a difference. And telling those stories is part of our amplifying success. You know, it's it's awesome and so exciting that we can save these species and um, we have such dedicated people doing that work. Yeah. And I think what's also uh, a good thing to recognize is that reverse the red is prioritizing and making it a, like you said, a pillar of the organization is to share these stories. Your title is communications officer. They hired you. They made this position and say, Hey, this is an important thing. They have a, a conservation officer as well, but it just shows that like, yes, we can do the work, but if no one hears about it and no one can get inspired by it, it's just going to kind of fizzle out. So it's, it's just so important. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, we're, we're working a lot with zoos, aquariums, museums, and botanic gardens because they are doing so much awesome and integral conservation work on their program side of things. But they also have, you know, so many visitors who come in and are interested in plants, animals, fungi. Um, and we're working with, you know, their education teams and their communication teams to also share that message because it actions to save species are within reach for everyone. And so to inspire, you know, visitors to all of these places, um, we can really make a difference. And that's part of the empowering communities, um, you know, come, so many, so many of the programs that zoos and aquariums and, and museums and botanic gardens do are, are geared towards, you know, school age children. And they are so, so inspired by what they see. And if they, you know, write letters to their local, uh, you know, municipality leader or something like that, or, you know, organize an event of, of cleaning up beaches, um, you know, that, that, they get started making a difference really early and that's really empowering. In uh, Paul Hawkins book, blessed unrest, the movement with no name. We're trying to like bring that into, into uh, 
out into the open and show that this, these networks exist, these, these organizations, like you said, zoos and aquariums and local groups, that it's not about, hey, we've, we've all got to figure out how to get this moving. It's like, it's already happening. We just need to amplify it. And I think that's what's so cool about having Amplify Success as one of your pillars. Yeah, absolutely. And we're using, you know, social science and research to develop and track these campaigns as well. And and uh, especially a big part is behavior change. And so, you know, can we really have an impact on, on changing behavior? Um, going through zoos and aquariums to visitors, uh, a lot of zoos and aquariums run their own behavior change campaigns already anyway. And so sort of collecting all of that and seeing the the real world broad impact of all of these things that we're doing is, you know, part of all of our pillars are, are really intertwined. So obviously it's measuring impact and empowering communities and amplifying success and looking at these national networks and all of that is, is really vital for conservation. And one of the best reasons or best things about how reverse the red and Pelicanus are perfectly aligned is we can announce that our series, The Possibilist, is, is now going to be focused on the Reverse the Red movement and the Reverse the Red scientists. So in 2023, we're going to release six episodes, uh, all focused on different taxa from around the world and different scientists working on saving these uh, taxa and their habitats uh, and everything that goes with it. And we're, we're really excited to team up with you guys because we just love what you do and we want to do our part and try to share those stories as well. Yeah. And that, that message of optimism and hope fits so, so nicely into our plans for 2023, which is our year of action. And so we're really looking forward to releasing these at the beginning of a month and then having a two month campaign following that, where we hope to get stories from, you know, around the world. If we release, uh, you know, one about birds for the next you know, the rest of that month and the following month, send us all of your stories about bird conservation. We want to hear all of it. We want to share all of that, amplify all of that. Um, and uh, I am super excited to have everyone mark their calendars for February 7th, which is our first Reverse the Red Day. So, um, you know, Reverse the Red and Pelicanus will have a bunch of stuff all over social media, I'm sure. And uh, there will hopefully be events at your local zoo or aquarium or botanic garden or museum um, and some online things as well throughout the week. And keep an eye out for our first official episode with the partnership with Reverse the Red, but uh, that's where we're going to launch the new series where we're talking to Reverse the Red scientists on February 7th. So uh, we're, we're so excited. And I, you know, you, you talked about the, the year of action um, that is 2023 and that makes me think, like, what is it that people can do to get involved? Is, is there a way that they can, you know, get involved with this movement, either directly through Reverse the Red, or what would you suggest they do to say, hey, I, I need to do something about this. I can't just sit around and listen to uh, the news stories about how climate change is going to kill me. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, we have a bunch of different levels or tiers where everyone can get involved. So if you are working on conservation, get involved at, at a national level. So connect with your IUCN, you know, Species Survival Commission, um, get involved with your specialist group, uh, get involved with the, the national species specialist groups. Um, if you are at a zoo or aquarium or botanic garden, share your success stories, host events, tag us on social media, um, really, amplify that awesome conservation work that you are doing to, to the public. Um, if you are working on a community conservation project, you know, really promote that, share that widely, have partners that you're working with help amplify and, and build that into a big, a big story. Um, and then things that everyone can do, you know, support all of these organizations that are doing this work, uh, visit your local zoo, aquarium, botanic garden, museum, um, send us your conservation stories, participate on reverse the red day. We'll have events and online, um, you might get to vote for your favorite, 
uh, species that's listed and, and see what, see what comes up, um, from there. But yeah, really, uh, increasing awareness, increasing the number of people who are involved. Um, and yeah, just, just connect with, you know, connect, tell your friends, tell your family, tell your neighbors, um, making this a big, a big network and as big of a global movement as possible is, is really how we're going to be successful. Megan, thank you so much. We're so excited about our partnership and everything Reverse the Red does. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us. We, we really appreciate your time. Yeah, thanks for having us. We're really excited to get this kicked off too for 2023 in our year of action. Reverse the Red Day. We did it. <laughs> February 7th. I'd like to say a big thank you to Megan for talking with us about all the amazing things that Reverse the Red is doing. We're truly inspired and excited about our partnership moving forward. Host, editor, and producer is Austin Parker. Producers are Taylor Parker, Megan Joyce, Dr. Judy Mann, Dr. Jenny Gray, and Jared Lipworth. Thank you again for tuning in. We'll talk to you next time.